Good morning, everybody. Welcome to Christ Memorial Lutheran. Um, I'm excited to have you guys worship uh, with us together this morning. Um, if you're here, go ahead and please stand. Uh, if you're joining us online, uh, welcome. Uh, we're going to open up with Here With Me. Whoa! 
worship everybody. I saw that it looked like a really bright, shiny day outside. So don't we show that to one another? Say hello to some people around you. Go ahead. Everybody joining us online. I'm Reverend Jason Marino. I'm pastor here at Christ Memorial Lutheran. We're really glad that you're able to join us. If you get the chance, we'd love for you to stop by. Come say hello. It's good to be able to get to know people in person. Uh, don't worry, we're not scary, I promise. Uh, a couple announcements I wanted to make sure to let everybody know about. Um, we have our uh, new member class will be coming up on Saturday, October 26th. So that'll be down in the fellowship hall. Uh, we'll have that from 9 to noon that morning. So if you just wanted to learn more about the church and uh, get connected, we'd love to have you all here to join us. And if you can't make it for that, uh, we'll have some Sunday morning sessions that you can join us in November and December uh, to start uh, getting to know us a bit more. A uh, couple things, if you have been interested in being a part of Stephen Ministries, um, if you've got your application, go ahead and make sure to bring that to us today. Um, if you don't see some whoever gave it to you in the first place, go ahead and hand it to me uh, before you leave today, okay? And if you left it at home, well, go get it and bring it back, okay? We'd love to have you all to be a part of that. So those who are interested in being Stephen Ministers, make sure to have that completed in here for us today. By the way, after worship, uh, the youth are going to be going over to activate Katie. So we're going to be uh, playing some games. We'll have uh, pizza up in the room, the youth group room, and then we'll leave from there. Uh, we'll be back here between 3 and 3.30. Uh, we'll be having some fun with our junior and senior high youth. So uh, pray for me and my back. Um, with it, uh, a couple other things. We've got men's fellowship coming up on Friday, October 11th, uh, 6 p.m. at H-Town Brewing. You can talk to uh, Luke Manning, the guy in the green shirt. Apparently they all decided to color coordinate like uh, Scooby and the gang. Um, uh, so go ahead and talk with them if you're interested in going. Uh, October 16th, Wednesday, uh, rock dinner will be at Rudy Lechner's. It's typically for older uh, uh, Christians, but frankly, they love it whenever the youngins come and join them. So just jump in. It's just fun. It's not always on a Wednesday.
Wednesday, but they're uh, going there that night because of Oktoberfest. So it's a little bit different from the norm. By the way, the women's ministry, they'll be having a Cucina Italiana cooking class on Thursday, October 17th. Uh, Sylvia, if you could raise your hand, uh, if you're, uh, go ahead and be sure to talk with her if you were interested in being a part of that. Um, by the way, in two weeks, so on the 20th, after second service, uh, we'll be having a mission trip servant event interest meeting here in the sanctuary. So those who are interested in being a part of mission trips or missions in general, um, it'll be in two weeks. Meet us in here. Um, a few of us are talking about possibly going to Guatemala in February. Um, if you're interested in being a part of that or just in general and you want to bring some new ideas for what mission trips might look like, Please, we'd love to have you for that. And then the week after, so in three weeks, we're going to have our meet and treat. So uh, it's like a trunk or treat, but we do it in the gym instead of out in the parking lot. So anyways, it's just a lot of fun, different games, different candies, all sorts of things to be there. If you'd like to be a part of that, we really, we need plenty of people there to have plenty of tables set up with different games and the like. And if you're not sure what to do, you can ask us. We have ideas, different, different things to do. So uh, Annie, uh, raise your hand. Uh, awesome. It, now, if you'd like to ask any questions, you can reach out. But also, we have a sign-up form, so you can go ahead and sign up in advance, and we can prepare for that. Um, so let us know. It's either in the happenings, or we can get that forwarded over to you. There's quite a bit going on, quite a bit to do. But there's so much fun to be had in community that we sometimes, maybe we lose track of what really draws us together. And what draws us together as it, when we worship in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. As we are here gathered in Christ's name, there are many times and many ways in which what we view as Christianity, it reflects more of what we want it to be rather than what it actually is. See, that's one of the things that's really hard is that when we look at who Christ is, Christ was really confusing to the people back then because he took whatever they were expecting and just turned it on its head. That's the thing about who Christ is, is that he's not here to try to pander to whatever you think you want in your world. Christ is here to change you so that you then go change the world. That's a part that we need to come to God for because God has promised to be merciful, but sometimes we don't go into the world wanting to be merciful. We don't go into the world wanting to suffer a struggle. And maybe that's something that we have to face and let go of. So this morning, as we come to God, whatever confessions that there are that we need to lay at his feet, maybe part of it is also saying, God, I wanted to make the world fit the way I want it to. And instead, he's saying, I need you to be my hands and feet in a place that I was willing to die for. Let us come to God, who has promised to be gracious and merciful. God, I see the world and so many things that I keep saying, this is what I want to fix. This is what I want to make different. But God, you didn't call us to come here and try to boss around the world and make it fit what we want to see. God, you called us to be your children. And God, as children, there are so many times when you just want us to listen and to learn and to grow. But God, as you change us, Help us to be humble. Help us to know that it all still comes back to you. So Lord God, for the things, the times where we keep trying to push our own thoughts and agendas forward, God, we ask that instead that you would lead in this world by those who are willing to sacrifice. And may we be the ones who would be willing to do that in your name and for your sake. We thank you for your forgiveness in Jesus Christ. Amen. Whatever things that we keep thinking we want to see different, 
is instead as we come here, we come here to let God be the one to shape us by Christ Jesus through his spirit. And as we worship, I, as a called and ordained servant of Christ, by his authority and in his stead, have the joy of telling you your sins are hereby forgiven. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. With that, we have the joy of continuing and singing.
The first reading is from Hebrews chapter 2, starting at verse 1, and can be found on page 1001 of your Pew Bible. Therefore, we must pay much closer attention to what we have heard, lest we drift away from it. For since the message declared by angels proved to be reliable, and every transgression or disobedience received a just retribution, how shall we sh escape if we neglect such a great salvation? It was declared at first by the Lord, and it was attested to us by those who heard. While God also bore witness by signs and wonders and various miracles and by gifts of the Holy Spirit distributed according to his will. Now it was not to angels that God subjected the world to come of which we are speaking. It has been testified somewhere, what is man that you are mindful of him or the son of man that you care for him? You made him for a little while lower than the angels. You have crowned him with glory and honor putting everything in subjection under his feet. Now in putting everything in subjection to him, he left nothing outside his control. At present, we do not yet see everything in subjection to him, but we see him for a little while while he was made lower than the angels, namely Jesus, crowned with glory and honor because of the suffering of death, that by the grace of God, he might taste death for everyone. For it was fitting that he, for whom and by whom all things exist, in bringing many sons to glory, should make the founder of their salvation perfect through suffering. For he who sanctifies and those who are sanctified all have one origin. That is why he is not ashamed to call them brothers, saying, I will tell of your name to my brothers in the midst of the congregation. I will sing your praise. And again, I will put my trust in him. And again, behold, I in the children God has given to me. Since therefore the children share in the flesh and blood, he himself likewise partook of the same things, that through death he might destroy the one who has the power of death, that is the devil, and deliver all those who through fear of death were subject to lifelong slavery. For surely it is not angels that he helps, but he helps the offspring of Abraham. Therefore, he had to make, he had to be made like his brothers in every respect, so that he might become a merciful and faithful high priest in the service of God, to make appropriation for sins of the people. For because he himself has suffered when tempted, he is able to help those who are being tempted. This is the word of the Lord. Thank you, Nate. Please rise for our gospel. You can find our gospel lesson on page 845 of your pew Bible. The gospel according to St. Mark, the 10th chapter. Glory to you, O Lord. Starting with verse 2. Pharisees came up, and in order to test Jesus, asked, Is it lawful for a man to divorce his wife? He answered them, What does Moses command you? They said, Moses allowed a man to write a certificate of divorce and to send her away. And Jesus said to them, because of your hardness of heart, he wrote you this commandment. But from the beginning of creation, God made them male and female. Therefore, a man shall leave his father and mother and hold fast to his wife, and they shall become one flesh. So they are no longer two, but one flesh. And therefore, what therefore God has joined together let not man separate. And in the house, the disciples asked him again about this matter. And he said to them, whoever divorces his wife and marries another commits adultery against her. And if she divorces her husband and marries another, she commits adultery. And they were bringing children to him that he might touch them. And the disciples rebuked them. But when Jesus saw it, he was indignant and said to them, let the children come to me. Do not hinder them. For to such belongs the kingdom of God. Truly, I say to you, whoever does not receive the kingdom of God like a child shall not enter it. And he took them in his arms and blessed them, laying his hands on them. This is the gospel of our Lord. Praise to you, O Christ. We as the people of God 
have the joy of knowing who God is as Father, Son, and Spirit. Let us proclaim those words together using the words of the Apostles' Creed. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended into hell. The third day he rose again from the dead. He ascended into heaven and sits at the right hand of God the Father Almighty. From thence he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Christian Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. You may be seated. We've got some kids uh, that would like to come up for just a minute. Uh, we just have a, a short message for the children. Happy to have you all join us if you would like. Oh my, I am all sorts of crackly. All right. How are you all doing today? Oh man, you've always got that one little swoop with the hair. I don't know, it's like an 80s boy band, I love it. How, hi, how are you? I, oh, I swear, I trimmed the beard, I didn't mean to be scary. Okay, got it. Well, maybe next time, y'all aren't scared, I hope, all right, yeah, good. Now, let's say that I were to tell you about a wonderful meal that you're going to have, right? Now, what would be in this wonderful meal that you're going to have? What do you think? Well, oh, good idea. Yeah, we should probably have food, yes, absolutely. I mean, should we have steak? Would that be, oh, some potatoes might be really, really great, right? And, oh my gosh, wait, what, what vegetables are you willing to eat? Okay, did I hear it? carrots, asparagus, what was it? Yeah, absolutely. Uh, you know, I actually really like asparagus myself. Sometimes spinach can be okay a little bit there. I know, I know, exactly. You got to do it right. You got to do it right. Now, let's say we presented this wonderful meal, right? So delicious, so amazing. And then I'm like, okay, here you go. Okay, split up these crackers among yourselves. It's a nice square meal. Uh, <laughs> see, now, if I give you this, after talking about this beautiful meal, how does that feel? You're like, this, is, that, is that the same? Yeah, you're not really so much hungry anymore. You know, this is, you know, they give you this, and you're like, oh my goodness, this is not the steak and potatoes I was hoping for, okay? You can't make this medium rare, right? Well, the thing is, is that sometimes, that also happens with when we tell people about Jesus. See, see sometimes we tell people about how wonderful Jesus is and how amazing and all these things, but then the way that we act or the things that we think are important, it's not the same. Now, do you think that, who do you think would probably have a better idea of what faith should be like, Jesus or you? Who, who's, who's a better judge on that? Probably Jesus. So do you think you should always come up with your own idea of what to do, or do you think you should keep going back to Jesus? You've gotta go back to Jesus, and that's what we're gonna talk about today, okay? Because oftentimes what we think faith should be like, we sometimes get it wrong. But if we keep going back to Jesus and what he did and what he taught, then we'll always be able to come back to what's right. So instead of substituting for the crackers, maybe instead we can give people the true meal that feeds and satisfies. Hopefully that was straightforward. Now we're gonna close in prayer, all right? So put your hands together, we're gonna close our eyes, all right? And let's pray. Dear God, Thank you so much that our faith is not something we come up with. Your son Jesus came to this earth, gave his life, and rose again. Help us to always shape our faith around Jesus. In his name, amen. Awesome. Thanks, y'all. It's good to have you. And with that, we continue and sing.
Christ the Lord upon the tree in the stead of ruined sinners hangs the land. Lord God, as we seek to hear from you, God, Lord, primarily just focus our mind to what you've already shown us. Lord God, that you've sent your son, that you proclaimed victory over sin, death, and the grave. Lord God, bring us back to what we know is true. Instead of trying to figure out something different or try to look for something new, God, help us go back to what is always the source of our faith of our hope, of our light, what has already been done by your Son. Lord God, may your Spirit speak to us that we would be convicted of what you have already shown us and that we would move forward in joy and in grace and in hope into a world that still needs that same message. In the name of Christ Jesus, amen. Howdy. You know, we're going to be looking at, for about seven weeks, the book of Hebrews. And there are going to be some things that come out in the book of Hebrews that might seem a little bit obvious. But each one of the parts we're going to look at is meant to be speaking to a different group that might have been looking for something that they thought maybe was more important than Jesus. But in reality, coming back to who Jesus is and what he's done is always the foundation. See, that's why it is that we're going to be looking today that Jesus is the foundation of our salvation. And that as obvious as that sounds, oftentimes we, as the people of God, sometimes we may lose sight of that as well. And I wanted to tell you this story from uh, back whenever I went over to China. I was living in China for a year. And when I was there and I was trying to learn the language and I learned just enough to be like, I want to eat this, I want to buy that, and you need to keep going straight in the taxi. But some Westerners had gotten really good and were fluent in Mandarin Chinese. And what I had heard was that there was this man who had gone up to a train teller and he was trying to buy a train ticket at the train teller, and he was telling the, the teller in fluent Mandarin Chinese, I want a train ticket to go from here to this place over here. And the teller kept saying, I'm sorry, sir, I do not speak English. And the man would pause, and, and, and he kept saying, but he would come back to it in Mandarin Chinese, 
I need a train ticket to get from here to this place over here. I'm speaking to you in Chinese now. And the person from behind the counter would keep saying, I don't know English. Please, sir, you need to step aside. And finally, a local Chinese citizen from behind the man had to lean around and say to the teller, hey, stop it. He is speaking to you in Mandarin, all right? Just listen. And then finally, the man again says what he is saying again in Chinese. And finally, the teller snapped out of it and realized that he was communicating to him in his own language. And what was so fascinating about it is that the reason that teller couldn't understand wasn't because the message wasn't right and it wasn't clear, but because it wasn't coming from a person that that teller was expecting to receive it from. And that's one of the things that we realize is how often it is that the message we're receiving is good and true, but sometimes we don't want to hear it from the person that it's coming from. How many times is it that we do that is maybe we're not listening to something because of a person's skin color or their gender or what political party they're from or even sometimes our spouse. And it may be the best right thing in the world, but because of who it's coming from, it somehow just does not come through. And that's what it is that we end up seeing with much of the message coming across to the Hebrew people, the Jewish community at that time. And one of the things that they were looking for in many ways was they were wanting God to speak through some amazing, supernatural, otherworldly, angelic presence. They were looking for something that they had seen in the stories throughout scripture of times whenever there would be some angel host that was there to proclaim and speak something amazing. Granted, they ignored the times whenever God's presence was there in a very clearly human form, but not incarnate in the way that Jesus was. And that's the thing about who Jesus was is that they weren't necessarily expecting God to be doing his work or speaking his word through a guy with brunette hair and calloused hands and a penchant for good wine. But the thing with it is that who Jesus is is who he's meant to be. Thing is, is that oftentimes we may be even looking for God to be speaking through some sort of amazing presence, something that is otherworldly. We might be expecting it to be a, a hitchhiker going down some highway or a woman with a Scottish accent and long red hair. But oftentimes we just keep wishing and hoping that maybe some angel would be speaking to us in some way that makes us feel belonging and that we connect. But even that desire is sometimes only one step away from an obsession with the supernatural instead of just coming back to God. Even to the point where I find myself putting my hand over somebody that thought they were communicating with their guardian angel through a Ouija board, only to realize that the voice that they kept hearing was a demon. Because so often it is that in our world today, the desire to hear something supernatural can sometimes lead us down dark paths that take us away from the true message. See, that's the thing is that the message has already been clear. The actions have already been done. Everything is already finished by Christ. Everything is finished by what has already been shown in Christ Jesus. And that's the thing with this is that God the Father had already spoken to the people when Jesus is here on this earth multiple times and saying, this is my son in whom I'm well pleased. Listen to him, follow him. Or even the disciples who walked alongside him, they were already there seeing, observing, but being a part of this ministry that he's already done. And that they were able to partake in it and then tell everybody else. Or the miracles that occurred. So many amazing things that were happening all around. And even in the early church, the things that they were able to do in Christ's name, but especially being led by the Holy Spirit. How many times is it that we can end up recognizing and realizing 
Do I wish to follow after Jesus? How many things in our lives are shaped and changed because we want to be like Jesus? We want to follow after God. God's spirit is there speaking, leading, guiding. Why isn't that enough? See, the thing is, is that oftentimes we don't want to see God in the normal. Whenever something seems a little too mundane, a little too average. See, even though everything's already been affirmed in Jesus, what's difficult for us as people is to realize that Jesus is also human. See, Jesus had lowered himself to earth. God the Son had come to walk among us, to be among us, to be human. But it was so difficult for us to grasp this idea that in the early church, there were times where they even thought that Jesus must have somehow lost some of his godness, his divinity, his deity. They called it the tapenoticon, that somehow he just kind of put the god side of him to the side because they couldn't comprehend that somehow Jesus could be both man and God fully both together at the same time because people have a hard time taking seriously someone in human form. But you see, the humanity did not diminish the divinity. That's also something that we have to be careful about when we read Hebrews. You may not know this, but in the early times where the Bible was being established, which books to affirm are the canon of Scripture, there were about 13 books that were being debated. They were debated mostly because of, you know, well, the authorship. Are they the original 12 disciples? Are these things okay to include? How do we feel about this? In Hebrews, as you may or may not know, people aren't sure who actually wrote it. The thing with it is, even looking at the book itself, it does sound a little different from others. But the reason to include it is because of reading it in the context of the rest of Scripture. Because at times, if you were to take Hebrews out of context, there are parts of it that might sound like Jesus is somehow not really God for a while there. But the rest of scripture shows us that he truly is. So what is Hebrews really getting at? Is just to show that he was willing to be humbled, but he didn't change who he actually was, who he actually is. And that's the thing about completing, completion of what Jesus did, is that this didn't somehow make him now the God-man the, the perfect person who is supposed to be bringing our salvation, but rather is completing the action itself. It's sort of like if you were to look back at the 2017 Astros, you know, when they actually do get through the division series. And to be able to say, when were they the champions? When were they the best team in the MLB? Was it only after winning the World Series? Well, no, they were the same team the ones who were going to reveal themselves to be the world champions. But they were that same team the whole time. And that's the thing about Jesus is that it was completing the work that would bring that crown. It wasn't because he was somehow flawed or incomplete in the beginning. But you see, we, we struggle with the idea that perfect God in all of his omnipotence would somehow be in a human form. Because we struggle with weakness. We struggle with humility. See, we don't like the idea that someone being humble is the one we're supposed to lead. We like loud. We like forceful. We like aggressive. We like things that make you agree with them whether you like it or not. You're going to eat those vegetables and you're going to like them. But the thing is, is that that's not where the honor actually comes from. See, the honor, the honor is in the suffering. See, that's the thing with this is that we want our faith, we want Christianity to be bold and forceful and to hit hard. But that's not what Christ has brought us. Because the glory came in sacrificing himself on the cross. 
for us. You know, I always find it fascinating whenever there are times where somebody says, you know, these these sermons, they just they don't hit the way that they used to back in the day. You know, I really want the, you know, the the fire and brimstone, you know, the hell and damnation. And I really want to be able to hear all that stuff. If you go back and you listen to my sermons, I promise you, there's plenty of law in those sermons. You will have somebody telling you, y'all, you really got to shape up. But the reason it doesn't feel the same is because there's also a lot of grace in there as well. It's meant to be. Because that's what it is that Jesus has actually shown us and given us. See, I always find it funny when the very people who are like, I really want to, people to be more convicted, and it's like, they're not in the pews. And it's like, if those actually worked, and you were actually convicted, then you would be here whether you like hearing the sermon or you don't. And yet they're not here. Isn't it ironic, don't you think? A little too ironic and... Yeah, I really do think. I know, I know, I know. Uh, for those of you who didn't quite get that, you could Google Alanis Morissette, or maybe you shouldn't. But with it, though, is that who Christ is is meant to shape who we are and what we do. And with that is to realize that we're never going to overcome death or all the struggles of this world by trying to be the loudest. It only happens by the one who is willing to give of himself. See, that's the thing about this, is that instead of the high priest coming up to the altar to put an animal or another person on that altar, it's instead the high priest walked up and put himself on. See, that's the thing about this, is that we as Christians, we're actually called that we're going to have to be the ones to suffer. And we're the ones who have to sacrifice. We don't want that. We don't like that. But that's still the only way that the world is actually going to be changed. That's the thing about this is that the only way that we can actually overcome this world is by being the ones to struggle and to give of ourselves. It means that there will be the times whenever you wish that someone would just listen to you, but you have to realize that maybe... Maybe you just have to live it, and they may not be willing to listen, at least not yet. There may be the times whenever you may be struggling because you really feel frustrated and angry at what you see around, but you know that if you yell and you force and you push, that you're just going to drive people away from Jesus. But there's also knowing that the struggles, the suffering, are still things that God can and will use. So I don't know what it is that, that there may be that you're struggling with. But I do know that we have a Messiah who has taken on human form. He knows what it's like to be where you are. He knows what it's like to suffer, but also is to realize that that suffering, that suffering is where we end up seeing grace and mercy the most. So with we ourselves and what we claim as our faith, as our salvation, it has to be founded on Christ's sacrifice. And that's gonna have to be where we find ourselves as well. Because it's never going to be going forth with aggression, it'll only be by going forth with confession. Because that's the only place that God can truly do his work and his spirit can lead. And the only hope that we can ever truly bring to the world around us. Thanks be to God. Please rise for prayer. Lord God, we know that there are so many times and in places where we keep wanting to see something or hear some message that is somehow going to, you know, hit hard or somehow grab everybody's attention. But God, the thing that actually changes lives, that truly brings hope and salvation is the same as it's always been, is that your son has died and risen again and that your spirit is now ours, leading us, guiding us. Lord God, may we be willing to pause and to be quiet and to follow you 
And that there be the, be the times whenever we struggle and we suffer and we don't get it. But God, your ways are the ones that will truly lead us. That will truly have an effect and a power in this world. So Lord God, may we diminish not because we are not loved and fully your children, but Lord God, because the fulfillment will come again someday. And that in the midst of this, we want you to be the one to stand clearly that your restoration, that your hope would be the only thing that takes center stage in our world. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Lord God, we live in a world that struggles, that suffers. Lord God, with all of those who are struggling after Hurricane Helene, Lord God, those in North Carolina, Georgia, Florida, South Carolina, Tennessee, Virginia, Alabama, Kentucky, Lord God, we ask that you would find ways to get the resources, the water, everything else that's needed to the people, especially the ones that are in the out-of-way places. Lord God, we ask that you would give strength and energy and purpose and direction to the people who are going to help and to serve. Lord God, for those of us who are capable of being there and to help, Lord God, move us. Get us off of our tails so that we would go and do so. And for all those who can't, Lord God, help us to find ways to support and serve however we can. Lord God, help us not to bicker and complain at each other and try to figure out who is to blame for a hurricane that nobody could manage to do or stop one way or the other. Lord God, help us to see the ways in which we come together to serve and to love. And Lord God, for those who are in the Middle East at this time, Lord, those who are in Israel, Gaza, and Lebanon. Lord God, there are all sorts of people who all do not know that Christ Jesus has died and risen again. Lord God, instead of us spending our time trying to figure out who to take sides with and who it is to argue against, is that instead, Lord God, let us mourn for the fact that there are people who are dying without knowing you. And Lord God, that there is suffering that does not need to happen. Lord God, we ask and pray that there would be a way to bring this to an end so that more people can come to know your name. And Lord God, for all of those living in Ukraine whose homes are being taken over by another country, we ask you, Lord God, to give them patience and perseverance and the Lord God to find a way that they would continue to be able to live in a country that they can call their own. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Lord God, there are so many things that we feel powerless to stop. But Lord, no matter what, you continue to start your ministry one person at a time with who we are and what you have called us to be, to do, and to proclaim. And Lord God, we thank you that your son has come to, to be the sacrifice and to rise again a new life and that he has taught us so much and that he continues to teach us by his spirit even as he has taught us how to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. You may be seated. As we bring our offerings to the Lord, Take the time, uh, the offering card that's in, uh, sorry, the welcome card that's in front of you. Go ahead and put down not just prayer requests, but anything that you're interested in being a part of, connecting with, something you'd love to see. And uh, for those who feel uh, called to uh, give to the air conditioning that we have going on, feel free to make that note uh, on the offering. Uh, whatever may be above or beyond, whatever is the usual, uh, we are grateful for that. And if you need to do that later this week, that would be wonderful as well. But whatever it is that we have to bring to God at this time as we are in our worship, we bring those offerings to the Lord.
And for all of you who quit your piano lessons too soon, you've just been shamed. You need to go back, get those done. Please rise. We see a world in which what we think of as Christianity sometimes pales in comparison to who Christ actually is. So may we live as those who are willing to put our lives, our very being, on the line for others as we proclaim the gospel of grace and mercy to the world. May the Lord God bless you and keep you. May the Lord make his face to shine upon you and be gracious to you. May the Lord lift up his favor upon you and give you his peace. Amen. We close as we join to sing. There is a grace in the rise and fall. There is return for everything we lost. There will be moments when the beauty is gone. There is power when we lost it all. And there is power when we lost it all. Sing that verse again. There is a grace in the rise and fall. There is return for everything. There will be moments when the beauty is gone. There is power when we've lost it all. There is power when we've lost it all. Hallelujah for a broken heart. Jesus uses all the pain and hurt. 